Hey everybody, Jango here. Today we're taking a look at Hostinger as a Minecraft hosting provider. You may know them as a general VPS hosting provider or WordPress hosting provider, but they also provide game hosting. Let's go way down to the bottom. The footer, there's a link to Minecraft hosting. I'll put a link to this page in the description. So right here we can see we can pick from one of several plans, game panel one, two, three, and four from various pricing per month. And we can save a lot of money by getting a 12 or 24 month term. We'll see more about that during the checkout process. The packages for Hostinger are basically how much RAM and how many CPU cores you get, as well as disk space right here. So you can see for game panel one, which would be good for a vanilla server, you get four gigabytes of RAM, one core, 50 gigabytes of disk space, plenty of space for a vanilla Minecraft server. As we go up here, we get game panel two, two cores, four cores, eight cores, eight gigs, 16 gigs, and 32 gigabytes of RAM. I'm going to set up a game panel four, and we're going to see how we can set up a vanilla server and a mod pack, both running at the same time on our game panel. So I'm gonna check choose plan here on game panel four. And so as I mentioned, you can save a lot of money by going with longer periods. This server is $40 a month. We do get a big discount on this first month, but it renews at $39.99 a month, which is about right for a 16 gigabyte server. If we do go with a 12 month or even a 24 month plan, we get an effective $27 a month. So pretty significant pricing on a two year plan. Right here, you can see we can save 74% if you're in the position to commit to a 24 month server. So if you are running a community server, it's probably a great idea. Okay, but we're just going to go with one month right now and continue. I'm going to create an account quickly right here, and then I'll see you on the other side of this. All right, I now have an account. So I have my username and password, and I'm just going to go ahead and go through the checkout process here. You can see here, just confirm your plan and pricing before you continue. I'll see you on the other side of this. All right, I've gone through the checkout process. I use PayPal. You can use a credit card and other methods as well. And here we go into our hosting panel. First look, follow our guided setup and your VPS will be ready in a few minutes. Okay, we pick our location. There are a number of locations in Europe, Lithuania, France, UK, Germany, a couple of locations in North America, East Coast and West Coast, South America, Brazil, and India. Set our control panel password. Like, like many Minecraft hosts, we apparently need a different username and passwords. Our username for our control panels admin, all right, we've got a good password. We'll click continue. Here is our details on our game panel. Click finish setup. And, and we're in. There is a setup process. It says here it's going to take about seven minutes and they're going to email once it's complete. So we'll be right back in about seven minutes. All right, well, before this finishes, it's almost done. I'm going to click on this VPS management page and see what we've got here. All right, so as we add servers to our account, they show up here. This is our game panel. Click Manage. So we have a VPS server running on TBN Linux. Our username and password that we set up during the setup process. It says it's running, even though it didn't quite finish. Let's click the Manage Panel button. Okay, here is our game panel. So this is our AMP game panel, and we're going to use the username and password that we set up during the second part of the process. That username was admin. And here we are in our game panel. So again, you can see this is using the AMP control panel. That's like Multicraft or Pterodactyl. This one uses AMP. And here we are. So this is the AMP game panel which is different than the VPS panel, which we have out here. This is this AMP control panel running on our virtual private server, running on Hostinger. This is a good deal different than most other hosting providers because I'm running a VPS server. I have root access to this server out here. So I've got a server. I, I can just go in and put anything I want on this server. And we just happen to have the AMP game panel running on it. Okay, so here we have, this is, a, also, this is also a little bit different than Multicraft or Pterodactyl. If you've used other hosting providers, the kind of thing you might be used to. 
So we can create an instance. Let's just do it. Let's create our first server. And we can pick whatever game we want to run. We'll find Minecraft in here. Minecraft Bedrock, Java, Bungie Core Proxy. Okay, a Minecraft Java Edition. And we'll just call this the vanilla server. Start instance on boot, update and start always. Let's just do, let's just create the instance. This is interesting because within this game panel, we can create multiple Minecraft or multiple game instances. Just as long as we have enough space on our server, you can kind of see over here, we're running a 12, we're running a 16 gigabyte server with four cores and four threads. We've got an AMD Epic 7543P CPU on this server. And here we go, here is our Minecraft instance. Let's just poke around in here before we jump in. So we can control the data stores, which are basically the virtual disks for these instances. We can set up templates. If we're going to set up multiple servers, we can create different templates for them so we can have things pre-configured for us. Here's the deployment log, here's the schedule. We can, we can set scheduled events. So let's set a trigger and then a task. We can do all kinds of things here, like restarting the server, run a command, but let's not do that. We'll remove that trigger. The configuration here is, again, this is out at the AMP level. We're not configuring our Minecraft server. We've got all kinds of configurations we can do out at the server level. Let's go into the instance. This is going to be where we spend most of our time. We had a manage button here before, but it's now starting the instance. And now there's a manage button. So now we are in this instance. So we need to accept the EULA. And within here, our server is starting up. And we can kind of see that here in the console. It's creating a world. And we have lots of options here. So right here, we can stop the instance. We looked at the console. Similarly, we can do schedules on our instance itself. Here in the configuration screen is the Minecraft settings. So we can set the memory limit on our server. We're gonna set this at 4096. And here we can set up additional Java options. In the server settings, we can set the server type. So Fabric, Purper, Forge, for example. We'll set up a NeoForge server or something next but we'll just leave this as a plain vanilla server. Set the jars, set the server. So there's a, there's a lot of settings we can do in here. Network, performance, set the view distance and simulation distance. Here we set the difficulty. You can set the server to normal. We'll have to make a new world if we change the difficulty at this point. But that's it, our server is actually already running. Here is our server IP address. All right, so here we've got Minecraft 1.21.4, which is the latest. I'll add a server, put the server address for our server, and there we go. With no configuration at all, here we go. We've got our vanilla server. You can give this IP address and port to your friends, and they can log in. Okay, so there we have a vanilla server. It's running. Let's go back to the instances. All right, next we can install a second instance. So we can run, as long as we have enough RAM, we can run as many Minecraft instances as we want to. So let's just click plus on create instance. And we'll run Minecraft Java again, and we'll call this NeoForge create instance. And it just needs to start up before we can click manage. There we go. It says the fault is preventing it because we have to accept the EULA. We click OK. And this one is on port 25566 instead of 25565. We'll just copy that. Let's just take a quick look at how to configure this if we wanted to install a mod pack, which was maybe running on a different version of NeoForge, for example. So if we go in here to the Minecraft settings, server and startup, right here, it is just running the vanilla Minecraft. So we go down here to find NeoForge. It will default to the latest 21.4.33. I want to install 21.1.79 because that is the version that I know the mod pack is on that I want to install, for example. So we just change that version, click download update. It's going to update the files and now it's got NeoForge as its server type. So after changing the version, let's just click start to start the server up. You 
can see here it's running NeoForge 21.1.79. All right, now the server is started up. I have Minecraft NeoForge running here, 1.21.1. .1. It's actually the exact same version that I configured. Let's add a server. We'll put the port in, 25566 is the port. You can see here, here is our NeoForge server. Of course, we haven't installed any mods yet. We could upload individual mods by creating a mods folder here in the file manager, connecting via FTP. Oh, we already have a mods folder. We can just put them right in here and we'll have a modded server. We could also download an entire mod pack. Generally, you want to install those files locally, then package them up, upload them into the entire directory here of your server and start that up just like that. I've got a whole video on how to create a server locally and then upload it to a hosted Minecraft server. It would apply to this just like any other Minecraft hosting provider. I'll link to that in the description. Now, as long as we have enough memory, this one's using 1.5 gigabytes so far. This one's using a half a gigabyte so far. We could keep adding instances and we could even like stop and start them and have multiple instances running here and swap back and forth. So that's a pretty cool feature of AMP that we can run multiple instances. Okay, I hope that gives you a good idea about how to set up a server on Hostinger and AMP, which is the gaming console that is installed by default on your Hostinger Minecraft server. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. I appreciate you.